Hey, what is up, guys? Master Gaming here, coming at you with a new segment for my channel. It's called Throwbacks, and basically, with this, we're gonna be looking at some highlights of you know some famous games that really made you know gaming what it is today. So the first one I'm gonna be using to kick off this whole entire new segment for the channel is Sonic Adventure Battle 2. Now, let me be frank. I think this was thus far the best Sonic game they did they ever couldn't have put out back in 2001. And the one reason why I say that is looking forward from 2001 going on over through the years, um, Sonic has definitely had a big dramatic decrease. A lot of people can agree with me when it comes to that. You know, Sonic ain't, it's not like what it used to be, you know, growing up starting from, you know, regular 2D scroll, getting into the early 2000s when they was, you know, experimenting with, you know, 3D design. You know, it really fell and, and it hindered off of what really made it. But, you know, the reason why I want to, you know, make this throwback about Sonic Adventure Battle 2, because uh, back when I was a kid, you know, my friend uh, that stayed across the street from me, he got a game queue for his birthday. And, you know, amongst the many other games that he got for his birthday, he got a Sonic Adventure Battle 2. And when he popped that boy straight into the game queue, guys, I tell you, we stayed up, like, all night just playing two-player. Because it was fun. We <laughs> It was awesome because, you know, you got these little things called, uh, like, these little power-ups when you collect a certain amount of rings and you can do this to hinder somebody else from getting you to the goal you know we would do that a couple of times or we would do it as like you know no power ups we just use speed and whoever is you no know, more faster wits and can get to the goal line a lot quicker you know we can win that way you know we just have fun but I'm guessing why you're wondering why I'm using like the space scene, like this little space scene, you know, where Sonic and, you know, Shadow uh, basically do Super Saiyan. I just loved in this one how, you know, what you guys are about to see, just love how they incorporated Sonic and Shadow being Super Saiyans in this. And you basically have to go out and save the whole entire world from the space colony arc that's about to crash in on them. And this was like my favorite just mission. I'm playing the game on Xbox. If for those that don't know what I'm probably playing it on, because uh, a couple of months ago when I was in school, I was sitting up and I was looking, and I saw they had a Sonic Adventure Battle 2 in, you know, in the marketplace. I was like, oh, bet. I used to play this a bunch of time over at my friend's house on my GameCube, so I set up and I beat it. Uh, it took me two days, roughly two days, you know, even though with classes and everything, but I beat both the hero side and the dark side to, you know, that's the only way to unlock the final side of... <coughs> getting the Super Saiyans, uh, them as Super Saiyans doing that mission, you have to beat both sides, and then you have to beat like only like one mission in order to do that last thing, but it was awesome, I had fun doing it. it, you know, it brought back a lot of good memories of me playing this Sonic game and what Sonic used to actually truly be, instead of, you know, him being a werewolf hog, uh, you know, that Sonic the Hedgehog, they tried to make where they introduced the silver uh, you know, that was, that wasn't really so much of a Sonic game. I'm not trying to bash, like, on Silver, them trying to, you know, introduce new characters and stuff, but it's like the way how, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog was executed. It shouldn't have been handled a lot better. I think if they would have took sort of, like, the same formula they had with Adventure uh, Battle 2, uh, I think, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog would have been a lot better. And for those that's probably confused, Sonic the Hedgehog is the Xbox 360 version, not like the old Sega Genesis, Sega Dreamcast version. It's just Sonic the Hedgehog, and yeah, it's just made for, you know, 360. But Battle 2 does far the best one next to Sonic Adventure. Uh, I actually, in real truth, I was actually was going to try to do Sonic Adventure because I bought both of them, the first one and the second one. But then it came to my mind that I accidentally, well not accidentally, I deleted it off my uh, 360 hard drive to make room for other stuff. But I plan on, you know, uploading that, not uploading that, re-downloading it to my hard drive so I can make a video about that. But I was like, oh, I bet I still got Sonic Adventure Battle too. Let me do you know, a video about this. It'll be interesting. They'll love it. And, you know... I just really, what I liked about, really, really liked about this game so far was, you know, they introduced Shadow. He was supposed to be this ultimate life form created by, you know, Dr. Robot and his great-grandfather. And basically, the reason why Gerald Robot created Shadow was to stop the thing that's barreling toward Earth destroyed because what basically the doctor wanted to do was, what happened was the space colony yard where you seen them, where you're going to see them all standing was 
was created by their father and they was up there doing you know experiences and stuff for the military and then Gerald Robotnik was basically like I'm not gonna do nothing for the military anymore you guys can count me out so what the military was did they came up there and basically saying we can't let him walk away from this we got too much riding in this and if he decides you know to go to the general but public about our material our military experimentations up here we can't allow that to be leaked so they basically went up there and so and killed everybody killed everybody um and took him into custody and thus far maria his daughter died that shadow grew closely to she died which in form that's why shadow thought that he had to you know basically wipe out all the humanity instead of save it but in real case was gerald bognick he made the space colony arc that giant lizard thus far so it could crash into earth and kill everybody on the planet and thus far he made shadow to basically counter that but then at the same time maria told him before she died give the people down there a chance don't let don't let what this is happening to us dictate your whole entire view of them because not every human is bad. And just for he had finally decided that he's going to help save humanity as Maria's last wish to him. He was going to grant to her, you know, when she died. And I just thought that overall storytelling was great. You know, when you play so much of the dark story, you don't you get enough about Shadow's background. He was created to be the ultimate life form with all these high expectations, basically a clone of Sonic. <laughs> To basically help Dr. Robotnik create this giant thing that was going to destroy the world. Which in case Shadow's true intentions of why he was really made was destroy all evil that, you know, that the doctor that created him. That, cre that created him to stop all evil that the, the doctor created him for. And then thus for him actually going to the totally good side of good. Fulfilling a wish to a woman that, you know, he really well respected because... Staying up there in the space colony arc, that's the only person Shadow ever talked to was Maria. And he really looked on, upon her a, a lie. He really she treated him nice like she was one of the, like he was one of the family. And you know, he actually had good point on humans until, you know, the government came in there and, you know, killed everybody in the space colony arc. And then that's what made him have a be bad viewpoint of humans and thus far made General Robotnik create a thing to build towards Earth and totally wipe everything out. And I just like how they got everybody coming together. Dr. Robotnik, Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, all both good and bad coming together to basically save the world. Because, you know, if the world destroyed, then they won't have nothing to, to basically rule or nothing to basically save. So it's like, you know, we all need to come in here and basically, you know, put all our differences aside and work together and get everything fixed. And I sort of just like that overall storytelling, despite the fact how... You know what ends up for being shadow i'm not going to spoil that for you guys if you guys keep watching the video you're going to see what happens to shadow but um then thus far when they made out of that they made you know sonic heroes from like how they made that sonic heroes i'm not going to say it's all that bad but you know couldn't have been better but sonic adventure battle 2 i can say is lastly one of the greatest sonic games you know sega could have ever produced and given to us um i hopefully hopefully you know, they they can, you know, realize that they're suffocating Sonic. They're doing too many stupid ideas with him. It should just be all basic cut to dry thing. Like they did with Sonic Battle to make a couple of stages. Do this and that. And then, you know, make everything simple and have a big bang and conclusion of build light and dark coming together or heroes versus non-heroes. And, you know, make it more awesome, more in developed, all that, you know. Really showed the potential of Sonic Team, of all these great characters that we have. You know, you don't don't try to overdo it so much because you want to try to sell, you know, the Sonic name because that's not going to change anything. It's not going to help anything. You're not going to prosper from it. You're going to drive your fans actually away a lot more than you think that you're doing by you sitting up, you know, doing that 24/7. But you know, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to let you guys watch the rest of the video. Enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, peace.